How's it going, my my convenient convenient man? Hey, did you block out everything behind you and around you? Yeah. How'd you do that? Hello. Oh, hold on. I think some of y'all are still on mute. Hi. Hey, Spencer. Hey. I decided to try out one of those um, the backgrounds. backgrounds and whatnot. I like it. So I like it too. From uh, Frozen, Frozen the Musical. <laughs> well, welcome, Lena. We're going to get uh, started in just a second. All right. Hi. <laughs> Thanks. Spencer, I'm going to need some technical help. I tried to put a background, but I couldn't get it to work on my phone. I th I think I think the backgrounds only work if you um, if you're on a computer. Am I right? I think. Well, maybe not actually. I'm not I'm not entirely sure. When we see each other live again, I'll get you to play with my computer. Yeah. My favorite are some of the Pixar backgrounds. Where did you find those at in Zoom? Um, well, they're, so you have to add them. So a bunch of like different social media accounts have been adding them. Oh, gotcha. Everybody have big plans for the weekend? <laughs> No plans. I know, right? You are so funny. <laughs> Walking my dog. Yeah. Sleeping. I've actually been so glad that we're able to go outside to walk the dog because yeah. I heard um, some European countries ban it. And oh, really? that would be really tough. I mean, I understand because I run into someone every single time I'm out there, but... Also, he can't just poop inside the house. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> when we were on our run this morning, um, we have a bunch of geese in our neighborhood and they've been paired off for a while. So I figured they were gonna have babies soon. And finally today we got to see babies and they oh. were just so itty bitty. It was so <laughs> sweet. <laughs> We're going to give everybody about another minute and then we'll go ahead and get started. Lena, you doing all right? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? It's been okay. <laughs> Lena, I was about to say I like your shirt. Thanks. Fan. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> One time I was in Seattle. Seattle and I went on the and I was like, I know it's not filmed in Seattle. So I don't know where they got that from. All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so thank you to everyone that is attending today's um, workshop webinar program um, on honor lock accommodations, testing, um, all kinds of different things that you might, um, that you might uh, come into uh, while taking online classes. So 
really um, kind of how today will work is that we're going to um, show a couple different uh, things and, and kind of go through some different uh, accommodation options, um, making sure that you're taking advantage of all of those things that um, you can during this time. And so uh, to start off, um, I would uh, kind of want to uh, show everyone um, the making sure that you are uh, getting everything set up on your student portal. Um, and so I am going to, uh, let's see here. Um, now for the students that are on here, um, I wanted to kind of ask a quick question about, have you, have you all already requested accommodations this semester? Um, we just you're you're on you're Alan wait you're do on. we just send it in the chat or no, no you can you can oh you can so I requested accommodations in the beginning of the semester but does that like still count for the because I take it at the testing center at CRC yep. does that mm -hmm. still count for the honor yeah, absolutely yeah so that's okay. something that we'll go through today a little bit um on testing and whatnot um let me see course this isn't working so <sighs> have any of the students that are on taken an honor lock test yet none of y'all have yet the honor lock you said honor lock yeah mm -hmm. i haven't gotten it yet it sounds like only one of my classes is doing it and um, so, yeah, I kind of wanted to attend this before I got it. <laughs> yeah. Um, lost track of the not having two screens is really affecting me because all my all of the the different um, screens and whatnot are buried underneath each other so um, i feel your pain So there's a couple things that um, I did want to share um, with you all. So when when one um, is that we the um, Office of Accessibility Services wants to make sure that um, you all are still communicating with us, and that you are um, and that all of your accommodation requests are still valid, um, and you know to the extent of of their reasonableness throughout the rest of the semester and so just because we've moved to online classes and remote classes does not necessarily mean that um that your accommodations don't uh apply now they may apply differently depending on the type of class you're in and uh the other aspects um that might be affecting that and so that's kind of why we wanted to go in um, today. And so we'll start a little bit with honor lock. Um, so unfortunately, can't really show you the, like the actual, what an actual honor lock test might look like. Um, however, we wanted to go through a little bit, uh, some tips and tools um, that we want to encourage you to um, make sure that you are using um, when you're taking the honor lock test. And so the first thing that we want to advise um, is that you reach out to your faculty members uh, prior to, to prior to knowing that you're going to take an exam to just confirm with them that that the two of you are are on a even understanding in terms of how the accommodations are going to work because I think that communication is really really important and it helps set up a um, mutual understanding moving forward that you know if if 
you're reaching out to making sure that your faculty are adding the additional time in the Canvas site um, and that your faculty are connecting with, with um, you all regarding uh, how um, the other accommodations are going to be provided. That, that initial communication is really, really important to making sure you're setting things up. Uh, once that initial communication is set up, I think then it's it's also important for you to uh, figure out kind of what uh, when it, especially when it comes to testing, what that space is going to look like. And so, um, you know, depending on you know the the space that you're in, um, you may want to recreate that space to at least mimic somewhat of what you would have gotten at. Um, the Office of Accessibility Services. So if it's um, a space with a comfy chair, um, you know, or something uh, that um, is going to be a desk of some kind or, or some sort of uh, space that's, that feels comfortable to you for testing, that's really important because in the middle of the test, you're not necessarily going to be able to, to shift locations. You're not going to be able to um, adjust as much and, and uh, you want to set yourself up for as much success as possible and so making sure that you're creating that space significantly prior to an exam and that you're not trying to get all of that stuff together the day of is also really important. Now with Honor Lock, um, what you're going to want to uh, make sure that you have uh, are a couple different um, couple different things. So the first thing is that you're going to want to make sure that you have um, a laptop or desktop computer. Um, so not a tablet. Make sure you're not taking your tests on those tablets. Um, and ideally that um, laptop or desk computer would have some sort of webcam. So if you have a laptop, it should have a webcam no matter. Um, uh, now if you have a desktop, you may need a separate um, webcam and whatnot. And so if you don't have that, you want to make sure that you reach out to us or get connected with somebody um, so that um, at the university, Tyler Shannon within case management is helping coordinate uh, technology needs for students that don't have the things they need for their classes. And so the other aspect that you're going to need to make sure you do is um, make sure you're using your Google Chrome browser. Um, and that you um, have, uh, have already downloaded the uh, Chrome browser extension for Honor Lock. Um, and we'll post, the web, we'll post the website that gives you all the information on Honor Lock for students. Um, and we'll probably show it to you a little later as well. But so that, uh, and then also you want to make sure you have a really uh, strong internet connection. So if, you know, it might help to, um, it might help to be uh, at a location that is close to your internet um, router um, so that you can make sure that you have the strongest internet connection possible. Um, if it does dis get disconnected or if there are concerns, the really important thing is, is not to worry um, but you want to make sure that you're doing everything that you can prior to the test to set yourself up for success. So, um, so then what, what you kind of need to know about Honor Lock is that Honor Lock has a couple different features that will be what that will help your instructors with proctoring your exams. Now, what I, what we like to tell instructors is that while Honor Lock can feel like it's locking down everything and that there's no flexibility to it, there certainly is. And that's because um, not only is Honor Lock um, monitoring everything through AI, but it, there also is, um, there's also an aspect of Honor Lock where people are, can monitor it and people can give feedback. And so we are advising uh, instructors there's a section in um, the instructor side of the proctoring part where they can share any information about certain accommodations for certain students. And so um, 
you know, if, if there's, uh, if there's certain accommodations that you have that are really important um, for you to take advantage of, such as breaks or um, breaks during exams, or if you need um, the option to use um, a medical device to check your blood sugar or anything of that nature during the exam, you can't, you, you know, your instructor can make sure that that is in the proctoring guidelines so that, um, so that someone reviewing all of this is, is aware of those things. Um, the important thing, and like Ann said, is that Onlock knows that technolo technology isn't always um, the best thing or the, the most effective thing. And so they know that. Um, and at the end of the day, it's really important to, to remember that even if your exam is flagged for multiple things, we have encouraged and are, and are urging faculty to make sure that they are paying attention to those flags and that they're not just automatically assuming that a flag means that you are cheating, you know? And so uh, when OnorLock um, kind of gives that data back to the, the instructor regarding the exam, um, it's gonna come back with different flags based off of the different uh, options that they've toggled. So, you know, if there's, uh, if there was an issue during the exam or, or if it heard some um, potentially um, alarming noise or something like that during the exam, it might flag that. Um, but your instructor always has the option to review that and we've encouraged your faculty review, to review that. So that honor lock, I think is really, it's really important to understand that, that there's a lot of flexibility there with honor lock. So um, let me, I'm gonna share my screen so that I can show you a little bit on the resource page for, um, for students. So um, on this, this website, um, it's pretty easy to get to. It's under the distance learning website. And then there's a link uh, on, on uh, OnorLock that then um, will take you to this OnorLock resources for students. So first thing is here's, there's a, there is a kind of guideline in terms of um, what things you need. They're the things that I mentioned a lot earlier uh, during um, the program. Um, you'll, you will find instructions on how to install the Honor Lock. Um, uh, where is it? Um, it wasn't there. Sorry, I lost track of it. Um, but you'll need to um, you'll need to install the Honor Lock Chrome um, extension, which you can find in the Chrome extension uh, store. Um, and this is also this page also gives you some information uh, about Honor Lock, what it does, um, and whatnot. You can see um, your instructor will give you exam guidelines during um, during this, and so. Um, if there are certain things that your instructor wants uh, to see, or if there's certain things that your instructor will let you use, such as an Excel sheet or something like that, they can allow those different options. One thing that we have seen is, is students asking about, um, students asking about, uh, no. Screen's going a little nutty. Um, so we've we've seen students asking about um, some particular uh, questions regarding uh, scratch paper, and so your instructor does can give you the option to use scratch paper. Um, we encourage you that if you are not um, or you have used scratch paper in the past at um, OAS and you have an interest in using that now. Um, you can certainly reach out to us and we can discuss it with your instructor. I would encourage you to start that discussion though with your instructor first. Um, and so simply just asking them if there's the option, they can then reach out to us if they have questions on 
um, you know, if it's part of your accommodations or, or um, if they have any questions about how to get that option um, or to make sure that you can freely use it during uh, the exam and on the log. Um, uh, but uh, so you'll see that uh, with honor lock there's there's a couple different things that um, it asks for it's going to take you through uh, an initial step of um, where it's going to ask you for your ID uh, it's going to ask you for a couple um, different things it might ask you for a room scan um, which uh, is pretty simple to do and so um, so if you need uh, if you need that option, uh, then uh, or excuse me if if that option is toggled in uh, honor lock, then you'll then you can certainly do that. Um, and you want to make sure you do that with your uh, if your instructor has asked you to. So, um, so Christina, um, typically when when it comes to the um, when it comes to the scratch paper question you asked, now that we're using this system, scratch paper typically is allowed if you're testing in person, um, but it's not really an accommodation necessarily. And so we wanna make sure that um, if you feel like you need use of that, that you discuss that with your instructor. Your instructor can sometimes um, and, and yes, like Ann mentioned, it, if it is an accommodation, it will be allowed and your instructor is required to provide that. Um, but if it's not an accommodation, then, then um, your instructor does have the option. Uh, there, is, there is the option for your instructors to include sort of a, a scratch paper section electronically on the, your Canvas test. And so uh, we wanna make sure uh, we can work with your instructors to help get that up. Um, we can also help them if you're making an individual request that's not an accommodation for scratch paper, um, you can also reach out to them. So, um, but if, if it is an accommodation, then you will need to make sure that, um, then you will need to make sure to discuss that with your instructor and you can reach out to your disability specialist to have them also connect with your um, instructor to make sure that that they can facilitate that option so any other questions on scratch paper or anything i've mentioned so far how do we know um who our specialist is because i reached out to my teacher and he never got back to me i don't know if he's just figuring out how it works yeah. but well, so that's, that's a great um, point, and I can take a quick tangent into um, communicating with our office. So um, you should have received an email the other day from our office about communicating with us. So um, what you'll, there, right now there is no one physically in the office, which means that at this point in time, if you're trying to call, you will not get anyone that is, that is picking up the phone and asking those questions directly. Now you have a couple different options. You can always call us and leave a message, voicemail message, and that voicemail message will come to us. However, that may take some time. And so really the best method is to either email the direct OAS line. Um, so email OAS at FSU.edu, or um, even the best option is to find who your specialist is. And so you can find that, um, let me see if I can see on here. Uh, of course, it's not in our test. Actually, it may be. Um, yeah, it's well, okay. So you won't see it here, but I pulled up a, a test student in our um, uh, student portal. What you'll actually see is on this main page, um, this page will look a little different for you, um, possibly. But where you'll see the information on your accessibility specialist, if you scroll down, it'll be right down in this section here from my understanding. So you'll see like 
the name, you'll see um, their email address, you'll see some more contact information and you can reach out to them directly. And honestly, that's probably the best method because then um, if you email the regular OAS email, it would just get forwarded to that person. And so um, emailing us directly, you're likely to get a, a quicker response. Okay, thank you. But either, either way, you know, it's really, it's important to communicate with us. And so, um, you know, however you get in touch with us, someone will follow up with you and make sure that, <coughs> excuse me, that you have all that information, so. Okay, so um, there's, and this page really is, is a, a really important page for you all. It gives you so many different resources, how to use Honor Lock, how to complete a room scan, um, you know, how to, you can yourself reach out to Honor Lock if you're having technology issues, if you're having concerns, and, and they have a really responsive team that can um, help you in those moments. And so we really want to make sure that we want to dispel a little bit of the, the concerns that you may have about Honor Lock and, and let you know that everything is possible um, at least everything is mostly possible with Honor Lock and that um, it's really about that communication between us, you, and the instructor to make sure that everything runs smoothly. So one other thing that I wanted to show you was um, I actually, um, I believe this should be the link to Um, Josephine, yes, during, during the test, students, um, there is an option for support during the test if you do need to reach out. Um, I believe it's on the right-hand side of the screen when, you, uh, when you're taking the exam. But if you need to reach out, if, if you have concerns of any kind, um, that, that would be important. Um, a couple specific tips that we have uh, for certain accommodations. So if you have a specialized accommodation, testing accommodation that goes beyond just simple testing, additional testing time um, in this case, we're gonna encourage that you use the webcam um, proactively to indicate that you're using your accommodations. And so for like an example in this case is with scratch paper. If you're using scratch paper, show the webcam your empty scratch paper and then at the end of the exam, tear up the scratch paper on the webcam because then that's gonna help communicate to your faculty member that you are using the accommodation appropriately and that you're taking the, the steps to make sure that you um, are being very uh, transparent with them. And I think that that in and of itself will help um, the process to make sure that the faculty isn't spending a lot of time reviewing or, or questioning flags that come up on your exam because of your use of accommodations. So, um, let's see here. Um, thanks, Ann. Yeah, the, there's, there is a chat box that's available at all times during the exam. And from my understanding, they are very, very responsive. So we want to make sure that you're using that if you need that. So, um, um, Christina, um, during the exam, and Ann, correct me if this is wrong, but during the exam, if you enter the test on the test date and you don't have the additional time, one, you want to make sure that you communicate with us at some point in time. You don't have to communicate during the exam and you don't really won't want to because you probably won't have access to email. But two, you can communicate with that chat. Um, and if you chat with the support, they can get in touch with your instructor um, to try to facilitate adding the additional time. Um, if you end up um, not being able to get that, please contact us so that we can facilitate a makeup of some kind or uh, some sort of solution to fix um, that situation. So, but you wouldn't, if you don't, if you do not have your additional time on the exam, you're never penalized um, in any way, shape or form. Um, so, 
Ann, you raised your hand. Yes, I just wanted to tell students that the instructors can add the extra time during the exam and Honor Lock has a fast line to the instructors. So it probably will not be an issue if they can't contact the instructor and you want to cancel your test and retake it at a time when you're sure it's added, that's fine. But it's very easy for them to add it while you're testing. That's all. Thanks. So another example of using the webcam and honor lock in a strategic way to make sure you're getting your, using your accommodations appropriately is if you have um, breaks. So um, the important thing to note with breaks is that you want to do everything that you can to make sure you are using them um, in the correct way. And so we would advise against you not doing prep in advance. So not going to, you know, we would advise against you not going to the bathroom before you begin and then five minutes into the exam, having to use a break to go to the bathroom. Um, the goal is to, for you to still be able to use your accommodations and you will always be able to use them. But we want to, we want to make it easier on you and the instructor in facilitating those accommodations. And so something like going to, you know, to use your break during uh, five minutes into the exam might flag um, the exam. And while that break is certainly possible, um, you wanna make sure that you're not necessarily abusing that or that you're not, um, you're doing everything that you can to in advance to prepare for the exam. And so if you can use the bathroom prior, make sure that if you have food and drink during the exam and have that option, have that close to you, have your space prepared so that you can start taking your exam and then maybe towards the middle of the exam is when you would need to take a break. And so um, the other thing with breaks um, that we really wanna emphasize is that if you are taking them, I think it's really helpful to indicate to the, um, the proctoring system, you know, saying something to the, into the webcam I'm taking my bathroom break or, you know, or I'm taking my break, I'm using my break accommodation and then making sure that you're using, um, taking advantage of that time to as quickly as possible, do what you need to do during that break um, and then come back to take the exam. So um, there's a couple other accommodations that you could probably use with this. Um, you know, really, it's it's all about that about effective communication. And so, if you're prepping in advance and letting your instructor, you know, know I'm using this accommodation and this accommodation during the exam, um, can we make sure that we facilitate that? Um, your instructor can reach out to us if they have any questions about that, um, and whatnot. But I think also this page is this honor lock uh, resource page is really really important. Um, because it's gonna it's gonna help you with with making the most out of that and and if you do run into issues with accessibility um and i don't know if we ever got did we ever get an answer about um uh honor locks compatibility with uh screen readers they assured me that it works with all types of screen readers i um I hope so. Yeah. But if you are running into that issue, please let us know. Um, the other thing is that, you know, remember that Honor Lock is one single system that you're using. And so, <coughs> excuse me, the exam is not in Honor Lock, it's in Canvas. And so, um, if you're having issues with other systems, please communicate that with us as well so that we can work on a solution with your instructor. Um, you know, things, things can go awry, things go, you know, wrong and whatnot. And I think that timely communication can really help with uh, fixing some of that and making sure that you're doing what you can in advance to prepare um, and, you know, and think about what are the questions, what are the things that you might have difficulty with on this and how can you proactively address those with us and with your instructor. So... 
Any other questions about honor lock or testing in any way? Okay. Um, so, uh, um, Christina, I, I think, so when it comes to um, the question is, is there anything we should, we should particularly not do during the exam? Um, I think if, if you find yourself typically, if you want to communicate your typical patterns of behavior during an exam to the instructor, um, I think that's certainly appropriate and then they can be aware of those so that they can kind of mitigate if it's flagging that you're doing a certain thing at a certain time, the instructor then has the information if they're, if they're reviewing that. Um, and you had a, some, you raised your hand. Christina, I don't know if this is what you do, but if you normally look at the ceiling to try to, you know, gather your thoughts and compose an answer, maybe you would want to just close your eyes and do that instead of looking away or at the ceiling. I was thinking about this one and it is tricky if you normally, um, you know, stare at a, a space on the wall or look up at the ceiling, which I do sometimes, mm -hmm. maybe just close your eyes where your camera can record your eyes or just close when you're thinking. That's all. That's some really good advice, Ann. I think, um, finding ways to still, you know, any behaviors that are really helpful for you during the exam, you can still do that, but finding ways to make sure that it may not be flagging inappropriately. And so, you know, possibly closing your eyes might be a good option or, or, you know, this, in this case, you have, you have a, you know, a camera that you can possibly stare a little more into, or, or you have a couple of diff other different options that, that, might work as well. So um, the other thing that, you know, there's additional concerns that might come up during this time because you may not have taken so many computer-based tests or you may not have done a lot of this during um, in your classes. And so we wanna make sure, reach out to us if you're anticipating any other concerns or anything that, um, that might pop up as, as uh, a particular, particular concern um, that might not have been the, the case previously when we weren't um, doing remote learning. So, Anne? Elena, to address your question about muttering to yourself, we made very clear with Honor Lock and the Office of Distance Learning that a lot of our students read their exams aloud. So that should not particularly flag it. Thank you. Well, and, and I think the one thing that I will keep emphasizing is we don't know what technology will do, but what we, but what we can do is, and the wonderful thing about Honor Lock is that there is a person review system or review system that's based on individual people reviewing it. So that could be your instructor. And so if you're finding that your instructor is is docking you or, or penalizing you for things that are related to your disability, please reach out to us so that we can have a conversation with a faculty member and try to address that situation. So um, you shouldn't ever feel helpless or that um, you, you have to completely adjust your testing habits because um, we're going solely to uh, to online learning and online testing. So, um, so that's that kind of handles um, these particular uh, honor lock uh, honor lock and testing accommodations. One thing, um, another thing that I kind of wanted to share was was other accommodations. So we know there's other aspects to your classes that are that may be affecting some of your work and whatnot. And so we have previous webinars that um, kind of go into some really um, good tips and tools, um, but we wanna make sure that you're taking advantage of all those accommodations. And so um, 
there's two particular accommodations that I think come to mind that are that might be adjusted during this time because of the nature of the coursework that we're doing. And so the first is um, audio recording. And so uh, what you may notice is that some of your instructors may be doing um, live lectures through Zoom. And then some may be, uh, some may, may be doing asynchronous. So they may be posting lectures posting videos um, to help you uh, to go through kind of the, those uh, different options uh, for the course content um, in the class. And so your audio, if you have an audio recording um, accommodation, it's important to note that that still will apply, uh, <clears throat> but it depends on the situation. And so if your class is Zoom recorded, uh, or if your class is uh, live through Zoom, we would encourage you to reach out um, and you can also help uh, have us help reach out to your faculty uh, to encourage them to set the option for recording on Zoom uh, because then that would get you an automatic uh, audio recording of the lecture so that you wouldn't necessarily have to do it yourself. You do always have the option to use your device um, and sit it next to you when, when the class is recording and get the audio that way. However, that audio might not be of, of great quality. And so that's why we typically encourage you to work through your instructor to get a recording of the actual Zoom lecture. If it's asynchronous, your instructor should be posting um, those videos. Um, and it is possible to get a transcript or an audio version of that um, of that data. And so you would need to reach out to us to, um, to indicate if, if your instructor is not posting um, audio versions or they're not posting a video version um, that, you can, that you can get the audio yourself um, so that we can help you get the audio from the, from the video. Um, or we can help you kind of get, um, get the particular um, audio that you need from that, from that lecture so that you can use it um, to your advantage and whatnot. So, um, and then I know some of you all are in classes where the instructor is not doing videos and they're just kind of posting documents or they're posting um, PowerPoints and whatnot, and that some of you might benefit from some audio type lecture. It's really important to note that we can't necessarily require that the instructor do, do asynchronous video lectures or do uh, Zoom lectures. However, um, we can also help, um, uh, and thank you, Natalie. Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll post that how-to document on video transcripts in um, the uh, resource page uh, on the programs and events page where this recording will be posted. Um, but if you're in a class where PowerPoints and readings are kind of all that the instructor is doing for the class, it's important to note that we can't necessarily get um, the instructor or require that the instructor do some sort of lecture component. However, um, you still have a couple different options. And so if you feel like um, hearing that content um, is important to you. There are, you can certainly use a program that's downloadable for any student um, at FSU called Kurzweil 3000. Um, and that program can, um, can read that information out loud to you. And so uh, what we would do with that is we would encourage you to reach out to your disability specialist if you were interested in getting what we call alternative text. Um, now, alternative text gets you an electronic copy of your textbooks uh, that then can be read out loud in a similar fashion to an audiobook by that Kurzweil 3000 program. Um, but if you're simply trying to download it, Kimbu York, who is our accessible technology specialist, Kimbu can um, set up a specific meeting with you to give or send you information on how to download that program. And, from my understanding, it can read PowerPoints, it can read a lot of other documents. And I will... 
and Kurz, and Kurzweil is actually downloaded through, uh, from my understanding, through your um, student, your FSU student portal. So under the software download section um, on that page, we'll, we can uh, we can certainly see if about including that in, on the resources page where where this will the recording of this will be posted. So. But yeah, so so we want to we want to know that there are options for you to get um, the method of course delivery or the method of course content that most meets your needs. And so, if your instructor is just doing video lectures, you have the option to get a transcript that helps you in that case. So if you're good at reading, that would be an option for you. If your instructor is not posting lectures, using something like access um, assistive technology or excuse me. Yes, um, using something like assistive technology or assistive or alternative text can help you still stay on top of your coursework um, and, and utilize the, the most of your strengths with, um, with your disability. And so we want to make sure that you are taking advantage of all those tools um, as much as you can. So. The other option is note taking. So um, note taking is something that um, might or might not apply to your class, depending on the situation. Um, we we do and and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Natalie, but we have encouraged faculty if if you had note takers in the class previously, we've encouraged them to continue posting um, those notes, and you still should have access to um, the note taking module on the student um, on your OAS student portal. Um, we've had a couple different questions about what that means with video lectures and whatnot. And so um, you can do and do have the option of getting that video transcripts for any um, uh, videos in Canvas. And so uh, we do encourage you to take advantage of that because that can certainly get you um, all of the information that your instructor shares with you verbally um, and auditorily, uh, so that you can um, use take that take the take take the most advantage of that. So, Natalie, do you have any, have anything else that maybe you wanted to add about note taking or anything that? No, I don't think so. I think you covered it. I have been encouraging students to utilize the transcripts if possible. Um, some note takers have reached out. Um, saying they prefer not to upload notes with an online setting or because of the switch they're kind of handling with their own stuff. Um, so if you see that a note taker hasn't been uploading notes, try to access those transcripts. And if you can't access them, let me know and we'll try to find a new note taker, figure something out. So yeah, so that that kind of covers the kind of main uh, accommodations that you might um, come into uh, uh, contact with during this time. I think um, you know it's it's really important for for you to understand that um, the Office of Accessibility Services is here for you, and and we're here to help process through any concerns, questions, anything of that nature, and so. If there's an accommodation that hasn't been covered through this recording or, or this program today and you need to get information about it or, or you're really curious about how that might work, um, please, please reach out to your disability specialist to get that information. So, Any other questions? Um, we have a couple staff members that are on the, the call today as well. So um, if you if you have questions, now would be a wonderful time to ask those. Okay. Well, Josephine, did, were you trying to ask a question? To access Josephine, the notes. You, Josephine, you were muted. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Where do we access the notes about Honor Lock? So, um, Honor Lock, let me, let me show you the actual page. So, it is, um, 
there's a on the distance learning website there is information about uh, on a lock there and let me and i'll post the the actual link in the chat oh no nope. there we go um Lena, if you need to know, um, uh, Marshawn, I believe, is your disability specialist. Yeah, thank you. All right. Um, so that, that link to the honor lock um, information is posted in the chats. Um, and then it, on the side here, you see honor lock resources for students. And that's, if you click there, that'll give you the site that goes specifically through um, everything um, that you may need to know as a student um, about on a walk, so. All right. So um, with that being said, um, just remember to please reach out to the office if you have any questions, concerns, anything of that nature. Um, this recording will be posted um, within a small amount of time and we will be um, also posting all of the different resources um, that uh, we've mentioned during this call to our programs and events website um, on the main OAS page. And so uh, we want to encourage you to reach out there if you have any, um, want to get access to those resources, have any other questions on accommodations or anything of that nature. Um, really, it's important with it. I think one of the biggest pieces of advice that I can give during this time is communication. And so, um, in timely communication. So if you're, you know, having any particular concern, reach out to your disability specialist. Um, within a timely within a timely manner and, and usually we are able to work with the faculty and work with other individuals to get the answer that you need and so all right and if there are no other questions then thank you all for joining and uh, we will see you all later thanks <laughs>